Here we back with another one, man. Now, like I always say, the reason why you study history is not to romanticize history, reminisce on history, glorify history. The reason why you study history is to notice certain patterns to avoid certain pitfalls that you fell into in the past, right? Because history has a habit of repeating itself. So when you notice that your forefathers had fell into certain traps, fell into certain pitfalls, you're supposed to study their mistakes to know to never make the same mistake again. Unfortunately, many of us do not study history. Many of us have no interest in history. So in the modern day, 2023, we're seeing a lot of the same things happening that was happening back in 1723, 1623, 1823. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you watched my video yesterday, then you already know what's going down. Take a look up on the screen. The regional bloc ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states, has ordered the immediate activation of the standby military force to respond to the military takeover in Niger. This resolution was met with the full backing of the United States and the French government, as well as the European Union, the African Union, the UN, all the major international organizations. And we're gonna talk about that later today. But what do I mean by history as a habit of repeating itself? Well, obviously, if you have common sense, then you already know this military intervention is not going to be funded. It's not going to be simply off the back of the West African governments. No, they are going to receive the full economic. They are going to receive the full logistical support, the full military support of the European Union, the United States, the French government, all international actors to make sure that this military intervention goes according to plan if it takes place. And not only are they going to get economic support, but they're going to get support in the form of arms, weapons, aerial support, airplanes, the entire, the entire shebang. Unfortunately for us, as black men and women, we're going to be the casualties of this conflict, right? Those who are providing the economic support, those who will be providing support in the form of weapons and materials, they're not going to be the main casualties on the battlefield. They're not going to be the main ones suffering. They're going to be behind the curtain. They're going to be back in Paris. They're going to be back in Washington. They're going to be up in a mansion. They're going to be in a hotel room. They're going to be in an air conditioned room, sipping a goddamn drink, sipping some water in a goddamn European suit, comfortable, chilling, eating dinner. Why you suffering? Why you don't know what tomorrow holds? You don't know what the next day brings, but they're going to be living lavish, watching the developments happen on TV. That's where they're going to be. It's only going to be black men and women that's going to be the main casualties of this conflict if it takes place. And the, and the saddest part about it is the entire conflict is just going to be to protect the interests of American and European multinational corporations. That's the backbone of this whole shit. And if you tell me different, you're a fucking liar. The basis of this entire conflict is to maintain the interests of American and European multinational corporations. That is number one. Everything after that comes secondary. Everything after that comes secondary. And going back to what I said in the beginning of the video. Not much has changed and we are still making the same mistakes we made in the past. The only difference in today than in the past is the Europeans are no longer in the business of purchasing slave labor, right? So instead of giving you weapons and materials to go attack the next African nation, to go bring back slaves to the Europeans on the coast, now in the modern context, they give you weapons, they arm your militaries, they give you economic support to go protect the interests of American and European multinational corporations. But not much has changed because when they were in the slave business, that was still American and European multinational corporations. The only thing that changed is they are no longer in the business of acquiring slaves. They are now in the business of acquiring natural resources. The geopolitical landscape has shifted over the centuries, but the business model has not changed. They still put guns in our hand. They still put weapons in our hand so we could fight each other to protect the interests of European and American multinational corporations. And I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it, bro. That's the number one agenda. And we keep falling for the goddamn for the same old shit. We keep falling for the same old shit. Because at the end of the day, like I said, at the end of it all, they're going to be the ones sitting back with the money and the power. And we're going to be the ones sitting back looking stupid with millions of our people dead or displaced. So at the end of the day, man, that's why we study history. We don't study history to romanticize history. We study history to not make the same mistakes in the past. But unfortunately, because many of us do not study history, we have no interest in history. We just keep making the same mistakes over and over and over and over. They keep running the same play over and over and over. And we keep falling for it over and over and over. Now, let's get into today's episode, man. Take a look up on the screen. The president of Ivory Coast has stated that the ECOWAS standby force has been given the green light to begin military operations as soon as preparations and deployments are complete. 
Now, like I said, it's going to be black men and women that are going to be the main ones suffering at the end of this conflict. We're going to be the main ones looking stupid at the end of this conflict. We're going to be the main ones broke at the end of this conflict. And the ones that are funding the conflict, the ones that are supporting the conflict behind the scenes, they're going to be 10 times richer. They're going to be living 10 times more lavish. They're going to be living 10 times higher off the hog. They're going to be doing their thing. They're going to be driving the brand new Mercedes Maybach. They're going to be driving the brand new Lambo truck. They're going to be living up in the goddamn five, five star suite. And you're going to be living on the goddamn damn street now we got to continue man the reason why i say we shouldn't fight each other we shouldn't let somebody else from outside our culture outside our race outside our ethnic groups to come in and put guns in our hand to fight amongst each other if anything they should come they should come pull up like a man they should come like a man and fight your own battle fight your own battle protect your own economic interests instead of putting weapons in our hand instead of trying to allocate a budget to finance a war to protect your interests instead of trying to wage war via a vassal army via a proxy army why don't you send your own men send your own men from your own nation to go protect the interests of your own multinational corporations instead of sending black men and women to go die why don't you send your own men to go bleed and sacrifice their life for that shit man I'm telling you, not much has changed since the days of the slave trade. Not much has changed. They still operating behind the curtain. They still taking advantage of our internal disagreements and divisions to simply empower themselves. And like I said, at the end of the day, they're going to be 10 times richer and we're going to be the only ones looking stupid and we're going to be 10 times broker. Now, let's continue. Take a look up on the screen. This is a statement put out by the U.S. State Department, I believe sometime today. Yeah, uh, no, yesterday, August 10th by Anthony Blinken. And it says this. Take a look up on the screen. The United States joins ECOWAS in calling for the restoration of order in Niger. The United States appreciates the determination of ECOWAS to explore all options for the peaceful resolution of the crisis. Democracy is the best foundation for development, social cohesion, and stability in Niger. We stand with the Nigerian people in working towards these goals. We echo the ECOWAS condemnation of the illegal detention of President Mohamed Bazoum, his family, and members of the government, as well as the unacceptable conditions under which they are being held, and call for the immediate release. Like ECOWAS, the United States will hold the Council for the Safeguard of the Homeland, that's the military government in Niger, accountable for the safety and security of President Mohamed Bazoum, his family, and attained members of the government. Now, if you take a look up on the screen, this is a statement put out by the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and they said this. France reiterates its firm condemnation of the coup attempt underground in Niger, as well as the kidnapping of President Bazoum and his family. Gathered in an extraordinary summit of ECOWAS, the presidents of Benin, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Guinea-Bissau, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo. Now keep in mind, Guinea and Guinea-Bissau, that's two different countries. Just gotta let you know that. In the presence of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Niger, Mr. Masudu, that's a member of Bazoum's administration. He was also at the summit of ECOWAS. And I'm gonna show you a video of the ECOWAS meeting. And it's really, it's really hilarious, man, bro. Like, uh, yo, bro, a meeting, uh, a meeting of West African states, right? That's supposed to be, you know, black men coming together, black men sitting at the table like bosses. You know what I mean? Talking about our internal politics. And it's a bunch of white men in the building, bro. <laughs> it's a bunch of white men in the building, bro. It's a bunch of white men in the building. These supposed to be the, some of the most powerful black men in the world. And a bunch of white men is in the building. Man, that shit, that shit, that shit, it's not a good look, man. It's not a good look, bro. It's not a good look, man. Come, it, it's not a good, I'm gonna show you the video at the end. It's not a good look, bro. It's not a good look, man. It's not a good look because, listen, at the Berlin Conference, it wasn't no black men at the Berlin Conference, brother. It wasn't no black men at the Berlin Conference. So when we have in our personal conferences about our internal politics, why is it a bunch of white men in the room? We supposed to be sitting at the round table like bosses, talking like brothers. Why is it a bunch of white boys in the room, man? Why is it a bunch of Frenchmen in the room, man? Why is it a bunch of white boys from America in the room, man? Anyway, let's continue. The African Union has officially endorsed the military intervention led by ECOWAS. And if you take a look up on the screen, right here this is a letter that was a letter put out by the african union basically showing their solidarity with uh with ecowas and the western powers and the united states and france and things like that and in fact back in uh i believe sometime 10 days ago the u.s state department had put out a statement letting it be known that they had spoke with the chairperson of the african union back on august august the first so this should come as no surprise to anybody you know what i mean they already had these discussions behind the scenes now let's continue now, if you take a look up on the screen, this is the meeting. This was the summit that ECOWAS had that was discussing the military intervention in Niger. As you can see, 
bunch of non-Africans in the building, a bunch of, I don't know who these folks are, man, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know who they are, because like I said, it wasn't no black men invited to the Berlin Conference, so I don't know who these people are that are invited to our internal conferences about African geopolitics, I don't know who invited them, I, who, who are these folks, man, who, who are these folks, dog, like, it wasn't no African kings at the Berlin Conference, it wasn't no African kings at the European meetings in Europe, like, what, what the fuck is going, yo, I don't get it, bro, I don't get it, bro, I don't get it, man, I don't get it. And to be honest, we could even go into the psychological aspect. How do you expect to raise confident and empowered young children when these are the images they see? The supposed most powerful black men in the world, the West African heads of state, getting their marching orders from the European powers, from the United States government. Like I always say, the ones with the true power are the ones behind the curtain. You don't even know who these people are, but I guarantee they have more power, they have more leverage, and they have more influence than the men that you see standing up on the stage, right? The heads of state, they're nothing but figureheads. In, in, in the grand scheme of things, they're nothing but figureheads, right? It is what it is, man. It is what it is. It's a sad sight to see. It's a sad sight to see, you know? And, and it's really why a lot of our people have an inferiority complex when you see images like this. You know, it's, it's really sad, bro. It's, it's really sad because, like I said... The reverse would never happen. It would never be a scenario, maybe in an alternate universe, where European nations, where the European Union would break up. Imagine there was like a civil war amongst the European Union with one faction battling in support of African multinational corporations, right? Getting ready to mobilize troops against other European nations just to protect the interests of some African businessmen who have some economic interests in their country. Bruh, I mean, the reverse scenario would never happen. Maybe in an alternate universe or alternate timeline, but it, it just would never happen. And also, when they have their internal meetings, when they have their own conferences about their own internal politics, they don't invite they don't invite the black man. The black man is not invited to these personal private meetings, these secret meetings. When, when the European and American heads of state link up, what? We're, we're, we're not privy to what's going on behind the scenes. But when it comes to our conferences, our meetings, the white boys in the back, you know, the white boys in the back, texting, texting Macron, texting Joe Biden and shit like that. Yo, it's crazy, bro. It's, it's, it's really disheartening. It's really disheartening. But o only thing I could say is, you know, I'm not calling for war, man. I'm not calling for war because because at the end of the day, like I said, it's going to be black men, black women and black children that are suffering the most. And it's going to be European men and European women that's going to be counting up the money. That's going to be living lavish. That's going to be, you know, living amazing. And we're going to be just still fucked up in the game, man. We're going to be fucked up in the game, bro. Fucked up in the game. And they're going to be richer and more powerful. And we're going to be more fucked up in the game. There is no victory in this situation, bro. There is no victory in this situation. Anytime weapons have been placed into the hands of our people to fight the battle of a foreign power, we've always been the ones looking stupid at the end of the day. We've always been the ones broke at the end of the day. We've always been the ones fucked up and looking foolish at the end of the day. And this will be no different, man. This will be no different. Because you already know, man, weapons are about to flood into the Sahil. You already know You already know the game plan, bro. Weapons are about to flood into the Sahil, bro. You're going to see a bunch of dudes with flip-flops, you know, with some brand new military-grade equipment. You're not going to know where they got it from. It's going to be, the Sahil is going to be destroyed. Northern Nigeria is going to be destroyed. I mean, Nigeria is going to be further destabilized even more than it already is. The Sahil is going to be just upside down even more than it already is. Bro, I'm telling you, there is no victory out of this entire situation, man. But like I said, this entire situation is based on the protection of American and European multinational corporations. And I'm going to keep repeating that. I'm going to keep saying that. Anyways, it's a boy never called That's a lane. Cash app up on the screen. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fought it. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I can't feel the power.
but they came for the bitch. They making no how with it, wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play all my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check, and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me, and she so at least. Shorty be chosen, I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit, and you're smacking their faces.